G'day guys, um, just another one of my shorter videos just to go into something that I've a recent discussion where the gunsmith was actually talking about bullet seating depth or bullet jump. So what she's talking about is the overall length of the round, the combined overall length of the round. It's actually talking about in hand loading, you have a choice of how, of how far you push the projectile into the case. Um, and that's so that when it sits in its chamber, when the bolt's locked in behind it, the gap between the rifling and the projector or the ogive on the projector. And I suppose it comes from a, a couple of things. A lot of people run, a lot of people, and I'm speaking to gunsmiths that have trouble with people always needing to be up at 10th hour, trying to get down to 10th hour or jammed or right up close to the lens. And I suppose that comes from a fair while ago, um, I don't know how many years ago, but they found that um, in precision shooting and bench rest shooting and, and F-class shooting and things like that, they found that coming right forward to five and 10th hour and zero thou and 20th hour, right up the front was where more accuracy was found. And I suppose there's a couple of reasons for what they actually found out there. One is as a little bit of people did what other people did. So if it, if it won on race day, then I've got to do the same thing. There's a bit of that guiding it. But there's also a little bit the nature of bullets and the nature of how things were set up that, when I say nature of bullets, that the projectiles of the early VLD or the early um, high BC projectiles had some issues really in how they fed into the rifling. And the closer you could get it, the less wobble, the, the nicer they picked things up and kept things very straight. Very important. It's what the constant distributivity is all about. It's what those bits and pieces are about. But the straighter that, that projectile went in, the smoother it went, and then the better overall result you got. The better stability, the more accuracy. And so there was some relevance to what was happening. But years have gone by, things have changed. One of the big features that have changed, and there's a few things in... Um, in uh, projectile um, logic or with measuring bullet speeds, with understanding ballistic coefficients, that sort of stuff. They've done things in the way of making it more efficient, but one of the big features and really was first really titled in the name of the hybrid was actually talking about something that had a very good secant radius, which is sort of the engine of a projectile. It's the front bit as it, as it tapers out, that bit there that does the main work through the air, getting that shape right to make it most efficient. But the ogive is the area, the next bit of the radius which moves on to the ogive is the, basically where the hybrid bit comes from. It's getting that angle just right so those bullets, those projectiles transition from the free space of getting out of the brass to getting into the rifling very well. And I suppose that moves into where, yes, things have changed. It gives you more choices. I first ran into it. I've got all this little range of, of rounds in front of us because this one here, the 6mm SOM, I don't forgotten if it was a 6mm or a 6.5mm SOM. I certainly found a place where um, I got, I've forgotten exactly the tests I was doing, but I was running one at 10 or 15 thou of bullet jump. And I had another one running at 70 thou of bullet jump with exactly the same powder load. The ones that I had been using, I'd raise that powder up there to that level, um, were starting to get a tight bolt lift and they were starting to open up the group a little bit because I was starting to overpressure a little bit. Um, I then chose to run that same test on a 70 thou. I've forgotten the test I was doing. I don't think it was due with magazine feeding, but I've forgotten the test I was doing um, and all of a sudden found exactly the same powder load, uh, got me a tiny bit more speed, less pressure and more accuracy. What it meant was, and there is actually a sound logic to this, um, the projectile breaking into those lands, into your rifling, there's actually quite a bit of pressure there. If you've ever tried to knock a projectile through, you'll realize they're getting really forced. They use that explosion. There's a lot of energy going on there. But there's two things going on with that energy. It's not just forcing down there, it's also gaining speed. So the more jump you give the projectile before it hits the land, the more speed it gets. So only yeah, you know, a, a thumbnail thickness, which we're talking about, but that thumbnail can be the difference of 20 times the speed that that projectile has got to. Once it gets enough speed, it's going to use inertia to push through that rifling, which then leads a lot less pressure gain. What's one of the pressure spikes or one of the pressure points in, in the cartridge um, firing is one is breaking the traction on the 
projectile to the case. The biggest pressure point um, actually tends to be the rifling. So when you jam them, that's why you're jamming the lens. That's why you see more pressure. But that's equally why back in the day, Weatherby ran really great big jump so you could run more pressure and get more speed out of the rizzling the basically getting the bullet speed up high so it used inertia to cut the rifling so or to cut put the rifling push the bullet through the rifling so that's what is a bit of the logic here i suppose my what i'm trying to say there very quickly is try it test it i'm now starting in the 40 thou to 50 thou is where i tend to start the faster rounds that's where i tend to start i'm not seeing any accuracy problems there's years of testing and bits and pieces that have all added up to this, but that 10 thou needs to be 10 thou or needs to be 5 thou or whatever it is, maybe test, maybe take a big step back and just try that. Maybe it'll open up to where you can use a magazine where you couldn't previously. Maybe it, in my case, it actually helped that round work. I think it's a little more speed versus, uh, or speed is relevant to jump. So the faster you got your projectile, the more jump you actually want is what I'm sort of feeling at the moment. But really my honest call is to test. Don't just presume that 10,000 is the best place and work from there. I'm finding I can start further back and getting very good results. So just a test, just a thought, just sort of let you know. Um, the, I suppose it's driven from a couple of gunsmiths telling me they're struggling with people who are trying to do everything, get the 10,000 bullet jump or projectile to, to, to rifling, um, fit it in the magazine, do all the bits and pieces. In a lot of cases, you don't need to do all of them. There's things that are gonna work for you. Whether that's not using the magazine, just single feeding, whether that's pulling the projectile back further, giving yourself a shorter overall length or more bullet jump, um, and all the details that go with that. But anyway, that's, that's, the, like, so that's the video for today. I hope that made some sense to people. Um, thanks for checking in on us, and we'll catch you next time.